When you think about the word legacy, it's usually associated with the end of someone's life. Their legacy is the mark that that individual has left on the world. Legacy is about the richness of an individual's life, including what that person accomplished and the impact they had on people and places. The importance of legacy was highlighted to me by the ultra-athlete Jim Rees. A number of years ago, I made a documentary about Jim taking part in the Race Across America, the transcontinental 3,000-mile bike race, which is considered to be one of the world's toughest events. In this video, I want to share with you what I learned from Jim's amazing story of competing in the Race Across America and tell you why your legacy is something you could be thinking about now. The Race Across America is a unique event which is really reserved for ultra-endurance athletes whose mindset is as strong as their body. Unlike the Tour de France, once the race starts in California, the clock is ticking until the finish line on the East Coast. There are no breaks or rest days. If you stop, you lose time. If you sleep, you fall behind. The race is an ultra-endurance event which is unique in terms of its length and difficulty. Each year, only about 50% of the solo riders who start the race finish it. It requires solo riders to finish within 12 days. If you don't finish within the cutoff time, you're not an official finisher. I wanted to make this documentary to examine Jim's mindset, and I was really intrigued by his self-belief. As an ultra-athlete, you need to be unwavering in your belief that you can pull this off, but I was aware that there is a fine line between self-belief and arrogance, and I needed to portray this sensitively. Jim was not a professional athlete. He had a job and a family to support, but he was driven by the belief that we are all built for greatness, and his main reason for taking part in the Race Across America was to inspire others and to show what's possible. Jim was aiming to break the British record for the event, but along the way encountered a series of setbacks. The most notable of these was having a serious neck problem 1,800 miles into the race. It's a common problem for ultra cyclists. Named after Michael Shermer, Shermer's neck occurs when the muscles in the neck fatigue and can no longer hold the head up. Jim's supporting crew fashioned a neck support from some PVC piping and a football helmet, and Jim had to attempt to complete the rest of the race wearing this hastily constructed device. The final day of Jim's race remains one of the most amazing things I've ever had the privilege to witness. After more than 2,800 miles, Jim was so sleep deprived that he was a danger on the road. The crew took the difficult decision to take him off the bike and let him sleep. To all intents and purposes, this was going to be the end of Jim's race. He was not going to get to the finish line within the cutoff and be an official finisher. When Jim woke, he was informed he had 190 miles to cycle and 13 hours left. He needed to average 15 miles an hour on the bike to be an official finisher. Prior to this, his average speed had been between 10 to 12 miles per hour. Given the accumulated fatigue and the fact he had just been swerving all over the place at a speed of four miles per hour, it looked all but impossible. I was absolutely gutted. We'd come so far and encountered so much, but if Jim didn't finish the race as an official finisher, then really who's gonna be interested in the documentary? Jim got back on his bike and just seemed to understand that he now needed to ride faster, a lot faster. His average speed picked up and he was hitting green lights. It suddenly looked like this might be possible. Incredibly, with just six minutes to spare, Jim crossed the line in Atlantic City as an official finisher of the Race Across America. That last day of Jim's race always reminds me of what's possible with the right mindset. Even when everything is against you, with self-belief, anything is possible. One of the greatest things I learned from Jim is the fingerprint metaphor. And this comes back to what I was talking about legacy. If you imagine picking up a glass, each time you touch it, you leave behind your personal fingerprint. And it's the same with every interaction we have. We leave behind our unique imprint on that person. Jim describes this as every conversation, every look, no matter how subtle, we leave our fingerprint. It could be a tut or a sigh, it doesn't matter. We've just left a fingerprint with that person. We've all experienced times when we've been with a friend and have given them our full attention. As a result, that person will receive a huge boost from the interaction because of the positive fingerprint you left with them. And I'm sure that we've all had times where we haven't been present at all and have left some people in a worse state. The whole point with the fingerprint metaphor is that it's about having a heightened awareness and deliberately leaving a more positive impression because you can. And this positive impression or legacy, as I was talking about earlier, 
shouldn't just be reserved for family and friends, but for everyone you encounter. It's just as important to leave a positive impression on the person scanning your groceries at the supermarket or the person serving you food in a restaurant. A simple smile is better than no connection at all. That might just be enough for that person to feel better about themselves for the rest of the day. We can choose what legacy we leave behind. Jim has just written a very honest and candid book called Vicious Cycle, which goes into great detail about the three solo Race Across America rides he did in consecutive years. And the book also looks at our patterns of behaviour and how they can shape our entire lives. It's a very powerful and moving account of Jim's life and achievements, and I will leave a link for the book down below. If you'd like to watch Jim's Race Across America documentary and learn more about why this is considered to be one of the world's toughest events, then you can watch it here. And if you'd like to see more of my videos where I talk about my own experiences with the intention of positively impacting others, then please do hit the subscribe button. I will see you in the next video.